Hello, hello, hello again, and welcome to your daily serving of my voice. You are listening to an appropriate podcast with me, your host, Brooke Brooke, aka White Trash Barbie on Instagram and TikTok. Today is August 6, 2024, and we're going to start by talking about this advertisement that Google put out during the Olympics. So Google was broadcasting over the last week a an advertisement for their new AI tool chatbot named Gemini, and shit has hit the fan because of this advertisement. So I'm going to tell y'all the story of what this is. So Google rolled, has rolled out this new AI chatbot tool and named it Gemini, and they are just really advertising the shit out of this, which is fine. I mean, whatever. I get it. But I don't think they thought this one through, guys. I don't think they thought this one through because there is a there's so many issues and we're going to get into them. But like there is just a whole ass host of issues with this ad that they put out um, over the last week. It's it's got some issues. It's got some issues. And uh, there has been a shit ton of backlash about this. And honestly, I understand. I understand why. And we're going to get into that. So this advertisement that Google decided to play during the Olympics, one of the most massive televised events in American culture that only takes place once every four years, um, they chose to they chose this advertisement to broadcast uh, during that. So here's here's how it goes. The ad starts with a man talking about his daughter and basically saying that she's a runner, she she does track and field, she's an athlete, right? The little girl, to me, my opinion, she looks to be about eight or nine years old. So this dad is talking about his daughter's favorite athlete and current hero, who is Olympic champion track and field athlete, Sydney McLaughlin LeBron. He's using Gemini. This, this AI tool from Google, to look up strategies to teach her, his daughter hurdling techniques. That's fine. Whatever. Cool. We get that. Then he's saying that his daughter wants to write a letter, write a fan letter to Sydney, basically showing Sydney some love. And then the dad goes on to say that he's pretty good with words, but this has to be just right, referring to this fan letter that his daughter wants to write to Sydney. Then the dad proceeds to ask to type into the prompt, the Google, the Google Gemini prompt. He proceeds to ask Gemini to write the letter, to write the letter for his daughter, telling Sydney how inspiring she is. Write a letter for my daughter to telling Sydney how inspiring she is. Then the ad cuts to Gemini spitting back out the response to this prompt, which is a draft of the letter. While the commercial is coming to an end, it ends with his daughter, the little girl, running, running on a track, and then a quote that says, a little help from Gemini. So at first glance, you might be thinking, well, what's the issue? The guy wanted to help his daughter write a letter to her favorite athlete. Like, what's the big deal? At first glance, I can see where somebody might be like, well, what's the issue? But if we dig deeper into this, it's it's uh it's got a whole host of issues that we're going to get into now. So the ad has officially been pulled from Olympic broadcasting because of all the backlash. The main overarching critique is that it's encouraging the replacement of genuine original human thought and human interaction with artificial intelligence. So that's kind of the overarching theme, but we're going to get into why Google should have thought this shit through, y'all. They did not. They did. Google dropped the ball on this one. They really dropped. They chose the the biggest fucking event in four years. Well, okay, actually, I take that. Interesting how president we have a president presidential olymp. Oh my god, the presidential election takes place every four years, and the Olympics takes takes place every four years. But whatever. Point is, one of the biggest events to take place only every four years, and they chose, they really, they really just dropped the fucking ball on this one, y'all. The first issue with this is how in the world, how in the hell is a child supposed to learn how to write and communicate their thoughts if they start every time with artificial intelligence? 
So instead of generating the the thought themselves or the idea or trying to just communicate that, whatever it is in their head, instead of trying to communicate that, instead, they chose to start with artificial intelligence. Instead of thinking, maybe the kid should should come up with the ideas ideas first and then write them out and then maybe then maybe use the AI tool to to edit some things, right? But no, no. This commercial, this ad decided Google decided to have this dad go straight to AI to write this letter for his daughter. It's taking out the child's opportunity to continue to develop their personality in writing and communicating. It's it's taking it's completely taking away the child's opportunity to continue to develop their own personality in writing and communicating because you're starting with the computer. Like you're letting the computer create the ideas for you. So by immediately going to an AI chatbot, instead of sitting down with his daughter, asking her what she wanted to tell to Sydney, and then helping her use her own personality and her own ideas to write this letter, <laughs> Google decided that it was an idea, a good idea for this dad to go straight to the AI chatbot tool and have it write the letter for his daughter. <laughs> instead of, it, you know, it being like this sentimental moment where the dad's like, okay, what do you want to tell your hero? What do you want to tell Sydney? You know, she inspires you, you know, just, just have, just have her communicate that to you, all of her ideas, and then, you know, sit down and write that, help her write those out. Instead of that being like this novel experience with his daughter where they can both learn and they can both, where they can both learn and grow and have this experience together. <laughs> Instead of that being like where this begins, they decided it was a good idea to have this man go straight to a chatbot. Um, yeah, that is just skimming the surface. We haven't even gotten into, we haven't even gotten into it yet. People are fucking livid about this shit. And honestly, I get it. I get it. So this man could have sat down with his daughter and had this, had this sentimental experience where they both get to write a meaningful letter to his daughter's idol, you know, and his daughter gets to express herself through communication, right? Instead of that, forget all that. Let's just bypass all that and go straight to the chatbot and let them do that for your daughter. <laughs> Instead of allowing your daughter to expand and grow and develop her communication skills, forget all that. Nah, you got Gemini. You got Gemini for that. We got you. We got your back. Your daughter doesn't need to learn. She doesn't need to, to grow or develop. No, she doesn't need to develop her writing skills or communication skills. We got that. We got you. We got you. Like, and two, let's just note, let's just note that this this girl can't be older than nine years old. I think that is another issue that people really have with this, why this is so fucked up and why Google just really did not think that they just... What the fuck? Like, what the fuck were they thinking? What the fuck were they thinking? Anyway, so back to the point that I was trying to make. I just can't, I cannot believe that they didn't think this through. So, yeah, this girl may be nine years old. She is way too young to not be learning and developing her writing skills, her reading skills, her communication skills, her her skills to express herself, right, through whether that's speaking or writing, both. Just doing all of that is so essential, especially to an eight or a nine year old. I mean, I, it's almost it's almost comical how stupid this was on Google's part. I'm sorry, but like it's 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 just almost comical how fucking stupid it was. Who made that decision? Did no one like sit down, watch it, and like really think through this? That's that's what I'm I'm wondering. Like how y'all thought? I just. Anyways, all right. <laughs> it might be it might be a little less stupid if the if it was like a teenager. Let's say this was like a 17-year-old who already knows how to read and, and write and express themselves and communicate. Still still learn like they they would still be learning and still still be developing, but it still wouldn't be nearly as bad as having the character be a young child who communication through writing or speaking is an essential skill that needs to be developed, right? 
when you're young. It wouldn't even be nearly as bad, I don't think, personally, if it was like a much older teenager. Because at least then the kid was given the opportunity to develop that skill beforehand on their own, right? But Google chose to use an eight-year-old and basically insinuate that you should just take that opportunity away from her, right? Take that opportunity to express her own ideas, to express her own thoughts, to communicate her own thoughts, and then have her dad help her develop those by writing something down. And Google thought it was a good idea to just take that experience away from an eight-year-old, a nine-year-old, and have the computer do it for her. The more I, the more I talk about it and the more I think about it, the more my mind is actually fucking blown. I think their only thought process in this was probably financial gain. Probably it's all about money, right? Probably all about the advertisement, getting Gemini out there. That was all they gave a fuck about. And um it shows. It shows. You are showing your ass, Google. All right. So this man is talking about his daughter and how she's a runner. She's a track and field athlete. She She's like eight or nine years old, real young. He's talking about how his daughter's favorite athlete and current hero is Olympic champion track and field athlete Sydney McLaughlin LeBron. He's like, my daughter, she wants to show some love to Sydney, and I'm pretty good with words, but this has to be just right. Hey, Jim and I, can you write a letter telling Sydney from my, write a letter from my daughter telling Sydney how inspiring she is? And then the commercial ends with a little, little girl running on a track and a quote that says, a little help from Jim and I. There's a little recap for us because we're going to move on to the, my next point. <laughs> about how fucking how they just this is so fucking stupid like this is this was just the only thing they were thinking about was money the only thing they cared about was getting their product out there <laughs> and yeah again it's showing all right so next point about why this is the stupidest fucking ad to ever grace us with its presence so the dad says in the commercial as we've quoted that he's pretty good with words, but this has to be just right. Okay, here's the fucking issue with this. Since when did a fan letter from a little kid to their idol or their hero ever need to be perfect? Huh? I'm sorry, what? Huh? Why is Google insinuating that a heartfelt letter from a child to their hero be 100% grammatically correct, correctly formatted, perfect spelling, etc.? Like, what? You're like sucking all the life and the fun out of the entire fucking experience. Why does it need to be just right? Like that you got to use a fucking computer to do it. It's what? It's a fan letter. It's a fan letter from a little kid to their hero. And you're putting all this pressure on it. That it has to be just right. So much so that a fucking computer needs to do it for you. Like that's too much pressure. You're literally, that's literally sucking the fun, sucking the life out of what could have been a really cool experience, like a really fun, great experience for a young child, learning, growing, developing, and then aspiring to be just like their hero, right? What the fuck? What the fuck, Google? Okay. Anyways, so <clears throat> this letter is supposed to be written by a kid, a heartfelt letter from a kid. Why does there need to be pressure put on that? That's how people learn. People learn by doing things imperfectly. Making kids feel like everything they write or do needs to be profound or Oscar-worthy material is going to keep them from trying or doing anything, ever. Like, what? That's too, It's too much pressure, for God fucking sakes. The poor kid just wants to write a letter to her favorite athlete, not win the damn Nobel Prize. Are you joking? Lord. Let's just put this shit into perspective. It's about to get deep up in his bitch. We finna get deep. Okay. So if you were Sydney, you're Sydney, the famous Olympic athlete, or let's just say you're any accomplished person for that matter. You know, you're famous. You've, you've, you've reached great heights. Okay. Put yourself in that place. Let's do that for a minute. Pretend you've busted your ass your entire life. You've dedicated, you've dedicated yourself day and night for 15 plus years to your craft, whatever that is. 
So pick something right now. Pick your craft, whatever that is. Pick something, pick a hobby or a skill that you wish that you would have pursued to the absolute fucking fullest. Just put that in your head, okay? Hold that, hold that in your head, okay? You're thinking about it, you got it. That's your thing, okay? So you've spent your whole life getting up early, your whole life staying up late, your whole life doing everything you can to be the best at what you do, okay? And now you've finally made it. You are at the Olympics or whatever big event there is for your thing, okay, that you've got in your head. Whatever that thing is, whatever the big event is for that thing, you have finally fucking made it after your whole life. I'm dedicating your whole life to this shit, okay? You've not only made it, but you're winning. You're a champion. You're winning awards. You're breaking records. I mean, you've done the damn thing. This is a big fucking deal. Because and the and the reason that I'm saying that is because Sydney has done those things. She is a champion. She has broken world records. So big fucking deal, right? Big fucking deal. You're you're at that place. The only reason you made it to that place is because after years of starting at the bottom, after years of starting from the beginning, you've messed up. You failed because we've all failed, right? You don't you don't just start something and you're a fucking pro the first time you do it. That doesn't, that shit doesn't happen. So anyways, so you failed because we all have. You've messed up. You've made mistakes. You've done things that were imperfect because everybody has to start somewhere, right? The first time that you try something new, the first time you try to learn a new skill or do anything, it's going to be imperfect. It's not going to be top tier shit. It's just not. Like, Unless maybe you're a fucking robot like Jim and I over here. It's probably not going to fucking happen. So <laughs> after years of doing imperfect things, you finally made it to this point. Everybody has to start somewhere. You can't be the best if you don't ever fucking do the thing for the first time. Right? That's impossible. We're not fucking superheroes. You did the thing anyways. You put it out there anyways. Even though you know it's not going to be perfect because it's your first time fucking doing it. You later or afterwards had had the power within you after you did the damn thing. Only then were you able to improve. Only then were you able to level up at that thing. Only then were you able to get better. So now you're here. You're at the top after you got back up and you got back up and you got back up again and you got back up again. Okay. You made it here because you learned. You took notes. You trained harder. And then you started to get better and you got to watch that happen. Over time, you were able to watch yourself improve. And now you get to look back at all of that. You get to know that you yourself had the power and the autonomy to get you to get you to this point. You got you to this point. You had the power within yourself to get you to this point, despite all of that. So that's you. You're at the fucking top. But it's been it's been a rough ride right? Nothing worthwhile is easy. So all that said, all that said, would you want to send the message to yourself as a little girl or a little boy that it has to be right the first time, that it's not okay to do something imperfectly, that it's not okay to mess up, that you don't have the power within yourself to learn and get better at something? You see where I'm going with this? Would you want yourself as a little girl or to send the message to any any kid for that matter that you can't do something imperfectly the first time? Because that's what Google's saying. Google's saying, this has to be just right. It has to be perfect. So you know what you got to do? Use a fucking machine, bitch. Use a machine. Like, use a computer to do it for you, Google says. Yeah, I just I just have a hard time believing if I I'm not Sydney. I don't I can't speak for Sydney, but you know what? If I was if I was Sydney or if I was someone like Sydney, I sure as shit would not want to send the message to a little kid, a little kid who looked up to me, who wanted to be like me. Like if I put myself in that back in that place as a kid again, and I was thinking about, you know, my hero or what the fuck ever, and I wanted to start and I wanted to start something or do something or put something out there or create something, anything, you know, I definitely would not want to feel like it had to be 100% perfect. It's just like, they're taking away the genuineness of a kid writing a letter to their hero. And it, it's just, it's uh, it's a little fucked up. It's a little fucked up. I think that's the issue for a lot of people. Or, well, I don't know if that's the issue for other people, but that's the issue for me. One of the many, many issues with this shit. Would you want your younger self to feel like they have to rely on something outside of themselves in order to become great or do great things or to produce great work? 
that it has to come from something else that they themselves cannot, that they themselves don't have the power to get better, to grow, to practice, to develop those skills. Like, because that's basically what fucking Google's, I mean, in my opinion, this is my, my very unprofessional opinion that Google is insinuating. It's sending the message that this little girl couldn't have written, couldn't have written the letter on her own, right? She couldn't, and and that it had to be perfect. It's just taking the sentiment out of the entire fucking thing. I know for me, I would want a kid writing me a letter, a fan letter, whatever. Somebody that looked up to me, (laughs) for God knows why anybody would, but if somebody was looking up to me, I definitely would not want them to feel like they had, that they aren't allowed to mess up, that everything they do has to be perfect the first time, or that they need to rely on something outside of themselves, something else in order to become great or do great things. Like, absolutely fucking not. It's within you. You have the power. You have the power. Nobody pops out of the womb as a professional. And I can't speak for Sydney, but people at that level understand that they had to begin in order to get to that point. They had to begin in order to get to that point. Personally, I'd rather have a handwritten, imperfect imperfect letter that I could tell was written by a child than a perfectly formatted, grammatically correct, computer-generated, formal-ass letter. But maybe that's just me. I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys think about this? Did Google fuck it up hard? Like, I mean, did Google just, I mean, personal opinion, they fucked it up the ass. They did. They really fucked this one up. Let me know what you guys think in the comments or on socials. Reach out. Let me know how y'all feel about this situation, because that's, uh, that's, I mean, I could go on, but that was, my hand started hurting. (laughs) I guess this is a recurring thing for me. My hands started hurting because of all the issues that I had with this, like, and I had to write them all down. But anyways, that brings me to my next topic. Where do we draw the line between enhancing human productivity and replacing original, creative, human thought? Scarlett Johansson was in a movie, or well, her voice, Scarlett Johansson's voice was in a movie in 2013 called Her. Scarlett's voice played an AI character in the 2013 movie. So she doesn't appear in the movie. Scarlett herself physically is not in the movie, but her voice is in the entire movie. So in the movie, the main character, a man, falls in love with a virtual assistant voiced by Scarlett Johansson. So the story goes that in May, OpenAI released a new voice assistant for their ChatGPT application. And they named this voice Sky. Well, the issue with this is that Sky sounds eerily similar to Scarlett Johansson's character in the movie Her. This new voice assistant named Sky was released in May of this year. According to Scarlett Johansson, in September of last year, Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, calls up Scarlett Johansson last September and is as asking her to be the voice of his new ChatGPT voice assistant application. He wants Scarlett's voice, calls her up, asks. And ultimately, Scarlett declines for reasons we don't know, personal reasons, who the fuck knows. She says no, she doesn't want to do it, which is fine. Respect that. Respect her. She doesn't want her voice used on this, on this project. And she, like, that's it. That should be the end of it. That should be, that should be the end of the conversation right? It's like, it should have ended there. Well, when they released this, this new voice assistant named Sky in May, news outlets and Scarlett's own family and friends were reaching out to her saying, girl, this, this shit sounds like you, this is you, this is you, this shit sounds like you. So Scarlett, of course, gets lawyers involved because she's pissed the fuck off that she told this guy, no, I'm not interested. Please don't use, I don't want to use my voice for this. Sorry, but no basically. And, um, and so she speaks out openly. She's like, I told him, you know, he reached out to me. I said, no, she's like, I'm getting a lawyer because this was done without my permission. Basically, she feels like what they did was steal her voice off of the movie, her, and use that voice to train their AI chatbot named Sky. I haven't heard it since, but when I did hear it, because there there was a news story done about this, but when I did hear the demo of the voice of Sky, 
y'all, it did. It sounded fucking, it did. It sounded just like Scarlett Johansson, like no lie. If you, I don't, I'm sure you can look it up. Honestly, I kind of want to look it up right now. Like I'm a little tempted. You know what? I'm going to see if I can find it. Probably not, but give me a second. I'm going to see if I can find this voice. So I got a clip of this voice. Let's listen to it together and decide if we think that it sounds like Scarlett Johansson or not. Um, and then I will get back into the rest of how this story goes because this guy's kind of a dumbass. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, is kind of a dumbass for doing this. Like, this is one of the biggest act actresses in Hollywood, been in Marvel movies. I mean, just just bad move, man. Bad move. All right. But anyways, let's let's listen to this clip real quick. Having a digital companion for your career is crucial because it can provide support, guidance, and assistance whenever you need it. Whether it's helping you stay organized, providing valuable insights, or answering your questions quickly and concisely, having a reliable digital companion can streamline your workflow and help you achieve your career goals more efficiently. Plus, it's always there for you, ready to assist whenever you need it. All right, y'all. What do you guys think? I'll I'll get I'll tell you my opinion. I think it sounds just fucking like Scarlett Johansson. I'm not even gonna lie. The thought is that they stole her voice from her AI character in the movie Her. That they just that's how they trained their AI chatbot was from that voice, and they did it obviously after she said, "No, I don't want to be used." For your chat GPT voice, like she said no, and they did it anyways. So apparently, so, so she comes out on the news or wherever, and she's like pissed off. Of course she's pissed off because she said no. And she's, according to her, so like I said, Sam Altman called her, she said, in back in September, and she said no initially. Well, then apparently he called her again just to double check, just to make sure two days before the release of this, um, voice assistant demo in May. Two, he called her he called her again two days before the release of this. Just just to ask, just to to double check to make sure to see if she had changed her mind. And again, she said, no thank you. And then two days later, this voice assistant, you know, chat GPT 4.0 or whatever it's called, comes out and it sounds just like Scarlett Johansson. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Let me know in the comments. Let me know in socials. Let me know. I, I, personal opinion, I do. I think it sounds just fucking like her. So after this backlash, after she comes out and she's like, I'm getting a lawyer because I'm pissed off, basically, of course, um, he comes out and says that the voice was, and I quote, it was never intended to resemble hers. Okay, okay. Then why did you make a tweet that literally, so this man, this idiot, I'm sorry, but he's a dumbass. He tweeted her, literally just the, so the, the title of this movie that Scarlett was in where she's an AI character is the name of the movie is literally her, just the word her. That's the name of the movie. And this dumbass, the same week that he releases this voice, makes a tweet. And the only thing the tweet says, guess what? Her. That's that's what his tweet said. It said her. And apparently this was like also, it has been said, that he has said that this is also one of his favorite movies of all time. Dude, dude, come on. Like, who are you trying to fool right now? Who are you trying to fool? But yeah, so according to him and his camp, they hired a voice actress months before he ever reached out to Scarlett Johansson. So they had a voice actress hired and lined up for this role, apparently months in advance before they ever reached out to Scarlett Johansson. That's his defense. Dude, that's a terrible ass defense. And here's why. If you already had somebody that was going to do the voice, why the fuck did you reach out to Scarlett Johansson at all? If you already had somebody lined up, you already had them hired, they signed the motherfucking papers already, like ready to fucking go. That's what that's what they're saying. But he still reached out to Scarlett Johansson anyway? What? It just doesn't make any fucking sense. If you already had somebody lined up for the role, why the fuck would you even reach out to her? It doesn't make sense, bruh. It the math ain't mathing. You wouldn't have reached out to her. 
if you already had somebody that was, if you were truly going to actually use this person's voice that was lined up and ready to go, you wouldn't have reached out to Scarlett Johansson. Like, doesn't make any fucking sense. Make it make sense. Oh, and another thing about this, this um, voice actress, this unknown, you, you, anonymous, excuse me, anonymous voice actress is that it's just that this person is anonymous. They will not be identified. They have not been been identified. Every article that I read about this, no one knows who this person is. So, okay, a little, little bit sketchy there, but okay, sure. So back to this whole topic of where do we draw the line with AI, with artificial intelligence and us? How, how is it okay for somebody to say, no, I would like my likeness and or voice not to be used? for your artificial intelligence, and then someone uses their voice anyway, like goes and does it anyway. Like it's, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty fucked up. It's kind of a fucked up thing. Personal opinion. I do, I do think it sounds like Scarlett Johansson. I think this man did exactly what he intended to do. Now, again, that's my unprofessional personal opinion. We don't know. I, who, who knows if there'll be a trial? I have no idea, but, but my, in my personal opinion, he, that he did it on purpose. He wanted her voice. She said no, and he did it fucking, he fucking did it anyway, which is shitty and fucked up. And um, anyways, so yeah, like where do we draw the line? How is this okay for tech companies to just steal content, to steal information, to steal likeness, to to train their artificial intelligence without permission, without consent? Like where is this line drawn and how is this okay? Like it shouldn't be okay. She should be pissed. Um, but yeah, a lot of people are upset about this because it does kind of seem like AI is going in this direction of, well, tech companies are going to use whatever they have to use to develop their AI and they don't give a shit how you feel about it. I mean, I don't, personal opinion, I don't have an issue with AI. I think that it can be useful. Like g- generally speaking, I mean, obviously I've vented, I've voiced my opinion about what we've been talking about this whole time, about what we talked about earlier and what we're talking about now, and how both of those things are stupid and fucked up. But I mean, AI in general, I think can be helpful. And I think that it can make us more productive. I think it can make us more efficient and, you know, help us generate ideas and that type of thing. I don't think that overall it's a bad thing. However, I think the reason people are so against, people are so worked up about this idea and this whole topic of artificial intelligence is because tech companies, again, are doing whatever the fuck they want and taking whatever content they want and using whatever they can get their hands on to train their artificial intelligence. Um, and they, they aren't getting consent to do so in a lot of, in a lot of ways. They are, I think they are more now that, you know, things like this have been happening. Um, I think it's, they're starting to they're starting to care more now because they have to legally. But yeah, I think that's why a lot of people are just like real iffy about artificial intelligence and and just very, um, what's the word, resistant toward its development is because these tech companies don't really seem, they're just, they're like, get out of the way basically. But so what do you guys think? Where do we draw the line between enhancing human productivity and replacing original, creative, authentic human interaction and human thought? It's um I don't know, it's complicated. It it's a complicated it's a complicated topic. So let me know what you guys think in the comments and reach out to me on socials if you have any ideas for podcast topics. Um I will see you in the next one. I love you so much for listening and supporting me and um have a wonderful day.